Huh? Oh, hey, what's up? I, I was just listening to something there. Um, let's talk about it a little bit. Um, hold on, let me first get really excited. Hey guys, what's going on? How's it going? Cover Killer Nation here. What's going on? Uh, we're going to talk about an album today. Yeah, buddy. No, that's not me at all. From Death to Destiny by Asking Alexandria. More like from asshole to toilet bowl. Yep. Asking Alexandria. I think I talked about these guys before. I think I did a band review or some bullshit on them. I don't know. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Uh, that was a lot of lines ago. No. No, I'm kidding again. But yeah, we're here to talk about them again. They have a new album coming out. This is coming out on Tuesday, August the 6th. And uh, from Death to Destiny. That really just... I, I, I gotta get something off my chest before we even get into this. I really do. This is something that's been bothering me. It's bothered me since I've listened to this. It's bothered me since I fell asleep. It's bothered me. It's been bothering me for months. I don't know why I'm just talking about things that have happened in the past 15 seconds, but it's been bothering me for months. I'm really getting sick and tired of these bands, these new bands, these new young groups that are trying to have all these little in, uh, inspirational efforts and shit like that in their music. I really am. You know, at first I could understand it. At first I could understand you're trying to promote a little bit of a positive message while being brutal as fuck, man. But whenever every single goddamn band and their brother and their cousin and their mother and also their grandmother are doing this, then the whole entire point is pretty much lost. You're not going to make anything inspirational while trying to sound brutal and telling people to go fuck themselves, mainly because it's kind of a double standard. It kind of takes things both directions. You can't have it both ways. Unless you like both men and women and you're bisexual, then you can have it both ways, and you're probably pretty damn happy. All right, this intro has gone on for way too long. Let's talk about the actual music. Most people would probably term these guys as deathcore. Most people would probably term these guys as metalcore. Other people will call them awesome. I call them shit. Okay. To be fair, jokes aside, let's talk about this record. 13 tracks, 50 minutes in length. Uh, I can find it uh, very, very difficult for a lot of people, especially you guys, subscribers of the Cover Killer Nation, and probably some people that don't know me and just click on this randomly. Hi, hit the subscribe button, sup. Uh, that would really struggle to make it through this album. I know I did. It was definitely a challenge. Uh, now, most of you who have been with me for a long, uh, for a long period of time know that this type of thing really isn't my bag, uh, 100%, but... The reason why I continuously go back to these albums is not just to poke fun where fun is due, not just to make a complete ass of myself and insult your favorite bands. Uh, rather, I like to continue to give bands uh, their proper chance because eventually I, I have a feeling that a lot of these bands will eventually uh, impress me. Great example of that was earlier this year with Bring Me the Horizon. Bring Me the Horizon was a band that I did a band review of and I wasn't exactly very kind to. They put out their new album, Sepaternal, and... I liked it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite album of all time, but it definitely showed uh, vast amounts of improvement, and it was definitely something that I found to be a huge positive factor, at least so far this year. Definitely a good story. But with Asking Alexandria, this, that case is, I, I, I can't call that a repeat case. It's not something that has happened again. Uh, I listen to this, and I immediately start getting flashbacks to their older material, only with a little bit uh, even further uh, polished production work, which, you know, sometimes for bands, it's all it takes. All it takes is a little bit more polish. All it takes is a little bit more elbow grease, buff out all those, you know, spots that are a little bit imperfect, and everything is hokey pokey. But in this case, Jokey, this is not what's going on. Instead, what's happening here is that we have the same style that we've gotten before. I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is their theory. Uh, but in reality, with this album, there's a lot of things that are broke about it. For one, I mentioned it already, the inspirational efforts, that's cool, whatever, that's your style, that's your lyrical thing, but everything else is just a lyrical clusterfuck. I really can't get into stuff like this, and it's principally because you're trying to deliver a message, uh, or you're trying to sound as brutal as humanly possible, and then you're talking about how you got your heart broken, or whatever it is. It just reminds me so much about why throughout the 2000s all of these, uh, the, the bands of the emo, screamo, uh, pop punk department were coming out and were, you know, delivering these emotional, heartfelt lyrics. And I just, you know, 95 to 99% of them I couldn't get into because it's just not a believable message either that or it's a message that seems just absolutely draped in this clandestine, uh, you know, fake, you know, 
dived out of motion. It, it's just something that just seems really, you know, prefabricated, something where you almost have to put yourself in that scenario. You have to just look down on yourself. And, you know, whenever you say things like, I'm such a fuck-up uh, all the time uh, on your on your uh, album lyrically, and you're, you know, being labeled as metal, it, it's just kind of really... It's hard to really pay attention to that and take it seriously uh, whenever you consider the multitude of names that have come before it in the genre and things like that. Now, I understand I'm also the same person that says that uh, Deathcore is metal, and I'm also the same person that says that metal can be many different things. It can channel a lot of different emotions, and it can encompass a wide range of musical expression, and that's true. And I'm going to continue to say that it's true because Asking Alexandria is a metal band. I'm not denying that it is not a metal band by what I am saying. I'm just saying that that is where the divide will really come into play. That is where a lot of people are being lost. Uh, especially whenever you consider fans that have listened to the genre exclusively, or at least semi-exclusively, even casually, uh, over the period of the past, oh, decade to two decades. It's one thing to really try to encourage a youth movement that's definitely cool. Uh, however, in order to really have the blessing of uh, the older populace, you definitely have to kind of, you know, apply to them somewhat, either that, or at least have a message that, they want to listen to, that they want to hear, that they believe in. And this is really, really difficult to do with this album. Now, the orchestration is definitely very well conducted on this album. That's one thing I will say. In the places where orchestration is utilized, I really like the usage of it. It's something that is the appropriate enhancer for a track. It's something that doesn't make it feel generic. It instead gives it a little bit of a uh, boisterment, so to speak, and definitely uh, increases the overall viability of the songs. Uh, the guitar riffs are kind of a mixed bag. There are half of these riffs that I find to be uh, pretty decent, at least, you know, for the style of music. Uh, the chugga chugga breakdowns are there, chugga 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 chugga, but that's okay because it's deathcore, it's part of the style, it's an element of the style, but there are other riffs that are on this record uh, that make me think that they're drawing a lot of inspiration from Disturbed, and that's okay, that's once again okay, it's what you want to do, that's cool. I just find the idea to be a little bit tired, I find the idea to have been done before, uh, not just by Disturbed, but by a lot of other bands that are kind of in that same little safe realm of metal, and it's something that really tires on a listener, it makes it very, very dull very, very quickly. You know, there are some people that are very satisfied with just that, and that's all that they really need, and that's all the more uh, metal experimentation that they really want to dive into, and for those people, that's fine. I encourage a little bit more of exploration, but, you know, that message is going to only fall onto the ears that really want to hear it. Uh, however, whenever it comes to album after album sounding like this, and really showcasing uh, very little, if any, musical growth, that's where the red flags kind of go off in my head, and that's where I, I feel that there's a little bit of a troublesome, you know, pattern going on here, and that's why I brought up Bring Me the Horizon earlier, because there was a troublesome pattern, a holding pattern going on for a little while there with the band, and then it's almost like they kind of rebirthed themselves. There's a little bit of a resurrection, a rebirth, uh, birth, a, you know, born again process there, and they were able to really channel a lot of of different things and experiment around a little bit and they crafted an album that was uh, leagues better than the things that they put out beforehand. Now of course if a lot of these bands did that it'd probably be an album that I would praise that everybody else would hate, especially fans of the band, but hey, that's how shit happens. Do you think everybody was happy whenever the Black Album came out by Metallica? No. Do you think people were happy with Diabolus and Musica by Slayer whenever it first came out? Fuck no. Do you think people were happy that, you know, a lot of thrash bands had to make commercial sellout albums just to remain viable in the market in the first part of the 1990s? Fuck no! No, a lot of people weren't happy, but they did what they had to do to survive. And as of right now, this is survival, but it's also kind of droll. It really lacks something. Now, you might slap at me and say, you're fucking full of shit. This has plenty of punch in it, because that's all that they're delivering. They're just delivering punch after punch after punch on track after track after track. Nice opinion, bro. That's cool, bro. Appreciate what you're saying, bro. But for me, I expect a little bit more from the music. I expect a little bit more uh, from a band that has signed and has been uh, in this game for a couple of albums. I expect a little bit more exploration. I expect a little bit more uh, noticeable difference. And that's something that I am not seeing. And if you're wondering why I was asleep, it's because of this album. I'm not going to lie. I can't lie about that any longer. This album definitely made my eyes heavy. It's definitely one that made me just lay down, go night-night for a little while. And that's just all I have to say about that. So, 
if y'all excuse me, I think I'm going to take something of the more metal variety, of the more straight up death metal variety as opposed to deathcore. And, uh, oh yes, scores, numbers, numerals, Roman numerals. This is going to get a solid um, V out of X. Uh, you guys can do the translation. I uh, don't really like this. Uh, still isn't my cup of tea. Really was hoping for another great story to talk about, like uh, Bring Me the Horizon, but it uh, doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, sorry guys. That's all I have to say about that. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.